Good morning. This is English 8 for Wednesday, and we are going to be on page 223. I hope you had a great day so far. And please make sure that you watch the video in its entirety uh, today because there are some things that you're going to need to know. So don't try to just skim past it, okay? Many of you are doing a great job when I get your notifications of, of your viewing. I appreciate that, that you're taking your classes seriously. Uh, this is how your fourth quarter grades are being done. So please make sure that you do everything. It's just like in class. You have a homework grade, you have quiz grades, you have test grades, 25, 25% and 50% of your grades. So it's very important that you do all the assignments because they all count, all right? Um, you started uh, last night for homework on page 223. You had to read this paragraph about Pompeii a city that was destroyed uh, by a volcano, okay? And you were going through and you were looking for some unnecessary uh, prepositions. So let's look at it. <clears throat> Number one, Pompeii was built, you should have changed the word to, beside the slopes of Mount Vestus. It was prosperous town known as a popular destination for the rich Romans and politicians. The people inside, take out the word of, the danger area did not know that Vesuvius was a volcano. They didn't know this mountain was a volcano. In fact, at the time, there was not even a word of the word volcano didn't exist, okay? The city was located on the edge of the mountain slopes beside, take the S off, the Bay of Naples. The city of Naples and Herculeum were beside Again, take the S off. Pompeii to the northwest. By all accounts, it was a lovely area. The town grew and flourished. It even had one of the earliest systems of social networking in the form of walls around the town where the residents could leave messages, pictures, advertisements, or other forms of communication. Take out the word at. Okay. In the years before the disaster, there had been a series of earthquakes in the area around this Mount Vestus. Because the people had learned to, the word should be accept, not except, so it's A-C-C-E-P-T, make sure you change that, them as common. The tremors were not associated with the greater tragedy to come. The eruption started at or about, but you cannot have both, so mark one of them out. Up at mid-morning, people hundreds of miles away could have seen, change the word of to have, the great cloud of debris that shot into the sky. As the debris cooled, it fell back to earth as ash, pumice, and rock. The uh, proclistic surge superheated poisonous gases laden the, with rock and stones of all sizes poured over the mountainside at more than 100 miles per hour covering everything and every every anything and everything in its path whether one was inside take the of and cross it out or outside of mark that of out a building made no difference. It all happened so fast uh, that the people had nowhere to go to escape. The eruption stopped at or about, but you cannot have both. It stopped about 24 hours later. Pompeii and its, its estimated 20,000 residents were gone. The destruction amounted, take out the up, to one of the deadliest volcanic events in history. Okay, so I hope you found all of those mistakes in the paragraph. Now, your other part of your homework was to write a short creative paragraph, at least five sentences, and we went through all the um, requirements for this paragraph on our last lesson. That needs to be turned in to Brother Francis or Brother David uh, this week. It will count as a, as I told you, it's going to count as an English class, as an English grade 
for your prepositions, okay? You had to circle every preposition in your final copy. Then I'm going to grade the second grade is going to be the paragraph itself. It will count as a test grade for your writing class. So write a good paragraph, okay? Write a good paragraph on that. Go ahead and turn the page and then look up here at Mrs. Turner, okay? Now, today we're gonna start our next part of speech. We've already talked about this part of speech a little bit way back at the beginning of the year when we were talking about writing good sentences. And we talked about sentences, fragments, and run-ons. In order to prevent a run-on, that means you have an independent sentence here and an independent sentence here, and you wanna put them together, okay? You had to have something in the middle. You had to have a comma and a conjunction. Now, that conjunction that we put in there is called a coordinating conjunction, okay? The most common coordinating conjunctions <clears throat> are these. Now, we, I put the word fanboy up here because there are six coordinating conjunctions. For, and, nor, but, or, and yet. Though that is not the order we say them in class, this is a great way of helping you to remember what they are. These six words are used to connect two sentences. So you have an independent sentence here. I might say, um, Nikki sits in the third row, but Isabella sits in the second row, okay? When I put the comma, but Isabella all together, I have a compound sentence. I can say Nikki sits in the third row, Isabella sits in the second row. Those two sentences can stand by themselves. But when I put them together, I use one of these words, fanboy. Remember, they are for, and, nor, but, or, yet. I use one of these words and a, and a comma. I join those two sentences so I have a compound sentence. Those are called my coordinating conjunctions. Sometimes when you are combining sentences um, you use a pair of conjunctions, okay? Such as either or, neither nor, both and, not only, but also. These pairs of conjunctions are called correlative conjunctions. They're a type of coordinating conjunction, okay? So coordinating conjunctions is the big group it, within that group, we have two. We have these individual words of coordinating conjunctions, and then we have the correlative pairs, okay? These coordinating pairs, okay? Now, they do the same thing. They're combining two things together. That is what a conjunction does. A conjunction joins two words, two phrases, or two sentences together. Now, the second major group, or because remember, these go together to one major group, is a subordinating conjunction. And we talked about these just last chapter. Okay, let's look at them. Our subordinating conjunctions are after, although, as, as if, as much as, as long as, as soon as, because, before, if, in order that, since, so that. I don't think you can see the last column on the video, so let me turn it there, okay? Than, though, unless, until, when, whenever, where, wherever, while. These words are all called our subordinating conjunctions. Now, here's the difference. Coordinating conjunctions join two things. They join two words, they join two phrases, they join two uh, sentences. Subordinating conjunctions introduce. Usually they introduce an adverb clause. That means we know that an adverb clause is a dependent clause. Okay, it's, it can't stand by itself. It's with something else. So a dependent clause is introduced by a subordinate conjunction. And then at the end of the clause, there's a comma, and the independent. So, subordinate conjunctions join to, get this, unequal clauses. Why are they unequal? 
because one is strong enough it has all of the parts to stand by itself the other one is weak it cannot stand by itself so they're different every time you see a subordinating conjunction it's going to be introducing a weak clause making it part of a bigger independent clause okay whereas coordinating conjunctions they might just be joining words or phrases with it now let's think last chapter we talked about adverb clauses adverb clauses usually come at the beginning of the sentence or in the middle of the sentence they're going to be introduced excuse me with the words that and because okay uh, we're going to use the same subordinate conjunctions in the middle uh, of, a, of a sentence most of the time though adverb clauses are going to come at the beginning i want you to turn to page 224. we're going to stop this and look at page 224.